And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the program. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Mark Goldberg, and this is Mark Vlogs Watches. Now, we're going to have a special guest uh, in just a couple of minutes, but I'm going to wait until people manage to get their, their you know, get themselves into the room here, you know, get your, uh, get your pods ready and, um, you know, hop into the room. There's about uh, a dozen of you already in the first 10 or 15 seconds. So, uh, for those of you who will not be watching this live, which will be the vast majority of you, let me tell you what's going to go on here. Um, the first thing is I'm going to chit chat briefly with the uh, the punters, with the um, the peanut gallery who are coming into the room to j join us live as we speak. Number one, and then uh, number two, I'm going to bring in my special guest, and we're going to talk about the topic, which is why I don't want to wear Rolex uh, anymore. And, um, and of course, we will be talking about your uh, watch questions and all of the things that you want to discuss. So feel free to say hello if you are in the comments um, and throw your questions up here too if you are live. If you are not live, uh, you'll see my Instagram right there. Yeah, right over there. there <laughs> there's my Instagram. You got to uh, follow me on Instagram and then you can ask me questions by DM for use on YouTube. If you don't follow me, and you just DM me directly, they're going to go into the trash because I, I won't see them. Anyway. Okay, real quick. Lit is see us who is here. Val and Grey Moon first, fist and respectos, sir. Um, gentlemen, we got a bunch of you guys in here now. JL unit, you popped your Negroni cherry. Well, I am afraid I am a Negroni veteran. And this is, uh, this is tonight's libation. I was actually without for a few days, but today I went and stocked back up. Thurston Howell, the third first fist. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, you're actually feckin'. Had to hit the cough button there. You do not want to hear the phlegm that is being dislodged by, the, by, by tonight's Negroni. Um, we have Dr. TikTok. We have iHeart Sushi, Sebastian. And um, there's people saying hi and asking questions. So I'm going to come back in um, in a moment. <clears throat> with my guests and then we'll kind of like jump into the meat and potatoes of this video why i don't want to wear rolex and your questions uh but first i do want to respond quickly to this dr TikTok post thank god you're on mark ac3 toxic guys i don't get even <laughs> i get revenge and it's all in good fun um you know listen archie you can only throw me off of your channel once but in return i can uh, revenge stream <laughs> rabble rabble stream a hundred times, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it together. Um, and uh, right now, I'm going to bring in our special mystery guest who I have filched and poached from Archie because Archie sent this individual a link today, tonight, moments ago, asking for this person to appear on the AC3 crap stream or <laughs> you know, whatever's going on right now over there which I don't fully know. But anyway, I'm sure you guys will tell me. Uh, but this individual decided, no, he would rather rabble stream with me. Who do you think it could be? It's the one, the only, the rancher. <laughs> dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum, 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 Big man's, uh, speaking of which, uh, Clyde, as always, we uh, we do not demand <sighs> the cats, but we appreciate them. Speaking of appreciation, thank you for being with me tonight, even though... Thank you for you having me. Yeah, you were invited by the enemy tonight, weren't you? <laughs> well, I prefer to think of it as more of the enema. <laughs> <laughs> Clyde, Campari is kind of expensive. Sweet God, vermouth is fairly sorry, cheap. Sorry. Campari, though, is like $30 a bottle, and so is the gin. So, you know, take it, take it easy. On me. Oh, anyway. also, if I can make a personal, if I can make a personal message to Green Room. You can who, I don't know who that is, but I, I hear he's a he's a yes, yes. Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> oh, now, is that your evil emperor impression? Yeah, is that what's going on? <laughs> nice, beautiful. No, no, no. That's Darth Vader. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me do it the right way. Give me a second. Clyde, I am your mother. <laughs> Clyde, I am your mother. As you know, your homo, your horological mother. Yes. 
Okay, well, guys, uh, thanks for being with us. Clyde, a special thanks to you. It's And remember, guys, this is not about the money. It's about the passion. And every and time you pledge a dollar, what happens, Clyde, every time they pledge a dollar? Well, actually, someone else, you know, some guys, don't send, don't send money. You know how mad your mother gets, okay? Seriously. No, it's like this, Clyde. It's like this, Clyde. Every time you super chat, a minotaur loses a horn. <laughs> okay, so... Um, let's see, Clyde, um, let's address maybe a few of these questions before we actually get into the topic at hand, which is why I don't wear Rolex. You don't wear Rolex very much either, but, um, probably for different reasons. So we may have to, um, each have our own reasons here to talk about, but actually what, uh, jail yes. unit 416, if you want to highlight that mm -hmm. one, which one jail unit 416. Oh, the super chat. I popped my super Negroni chat. chat. We'll see that he's he's the no, he's below that. Oh. super chat. We got a super chat. One X five dollars. The drama is exhausting and stressful. Don't know what to okay. believe anymore. We need to reset with some actual watch talk. No, thank you, Mark. To a certain degree, to a certain degree mm -hmm. our topic has been preempted by a watch company. Okay, let's face it, it happens. You know, you know, in January twenty second, nineteen sixty three, there was going to be the the premiere episode of Doctor Who, kind of got a little overshadowed. So I, I, once again, I don't know what you're talking about. The only thing that matters is what's going on right here with you, me, and the 70 people. What do you think about room? the Pelagos? You have the Pelagos. They a... just introduced a new Pelagos today. Okay. We're we're asking about... That's a really good question. Let's let's talk about it. But first of all, 1X, thank you ever so much. Um, I don't know what to believe anymore either. Um, it's probably all a setup. That's all I got to say. It's a conspiracy. And I think, you want to know who I think conceived of the entire conspiracy? I think it's Doc BBW. He sits back there in the Costco morgue. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Um, okay. So, you know, fistos to my friend BBW. Um, Clyde, the new... Uh, you blinded like him with it. science. I, I don't like it. Look, I've got the 42 millimeter Pelagos. Yes. They just came out with the 39 millimeter. Mm -hmm. There are a few things that they did right. Um, but then there's a couple... Th one giant thing that I think they did did wrong well first off 39 millimeters gonna come across a little small on my wrist that's just me mm -hmm. i mean look at mm -hmm. don't get the lotion don't get the yeah. lotion clyde but look at that wrist Ew. Ew. <laughs> i should be a model don't you think look i'm gonna absolutely touch yeah i got it so the 42 millimeter pelagos looks very nice on my wrist um and if it has a flaw the the previous model if it has a flaw it's the chubbiness i think it's like 15 almost 15 millimeters thick. And this new one, something that they did do right is they thinned it down to like 12 millimeters more or less. And they did that by reducing its water resistance from like 600 meters to 200 or 300, whatever that, that was fine. And they got rid of the stupid helium escape valve, which I have, but it's over-engineered and I don't need it. And they thinned it down. So that was a nice thing. The other thing is they have a new adjustable clasp that's sort of glide lock clasp-esque. And I like that too. Um, whereas exactly. I have, yeah, and I've got that industrial spring loaded, which is still really cool, adjustable class. So it's very cool what I have. Um, but they took away the date and they um and they just made it smaller. So I think they are now competing against themselves. So basically it's the Black Bay 58 versus the Pelagos. The new one, um, both dateless, both kind of small. What is it, 38 for the for the one and 39 for the other? So I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I guess I'm not in favor. However, um, if I had to choose between the Black Bay 58 and this new Pelagos, I would take that. What about you? I'd have to see them. I'd have to see them in person before I've rendered a final verdict. Well, that that. That that's fair. You had a couple of fifty eights. You had the uh, you had the blue one, didn't you? The, one? Well, no, I no, I just had one fifty eight, ah. the blue one. Mm. Glad you're falling asleep on the job here. Sing no, the song. I'm, I'm here. Look at I'm, this. I'm, up. I'm awake. I, <laughs> we didn't call out our super check. Yes, we we had a super check, Mike. You're supposed to like go crazy. Oh, dun, 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 <laughs> Watches of Wall Street. Dollar ninety nine. AD confirmed one Rolex every two months and a price increase. Okay. Well, so, um, first of all, the price increase, who knew I'm going to check it. I'm going to, that's a rumor that I have heard from nowhere else that there's a price increase coming now. Credible. 
Yeah. It's a, it's a credible threat, don't you think, Clint? Against inflation. Inflation and also the grand scheme of Rolex, the grand plan, right. you know, which is to uh, use the gray market to ride the price escalator to the top floor, then shut the gray market down with by putting, you know, near field com NFC, near field communication, you know, little dots inside their watches so that they'll be right. able to, you know, read them just the way. Like, listen, man, you can chip a dog right now for identification. You're trying to tell me that you can't chip a Rolex? Of course right. you can. So they will shut it down when it's convenient to them. So we are going for Patek level pricing and uh, the gray market is uh, taking this elevator to the top. That's why they tolerate now, it. Ed Hammond, Ed Hammond is not from Clinton by any chance, right? No, that'd be Teddy. Sorry. Ed Hammond is saying day dates are selling for retail on the gray, on the gray market. Excuse me. He's also telling you to go back to work. <laughs> Day dates are selling for yes, day dates have come down in price. Listen, there is a, a correction in the Rolex market, and Rolex prices have rolled back um, to prices that were, you know, like maybe one or two years ago on some models, and prices that we've saw like maybe seven, eight, nine months ago yes. on other models. So it just kind of depends on the model. Um, it's getting tempting. I'll tell you what's starting to get tempting to me at the um, at the uh, at the new, you know, you the new price level, day date, yeah, yeah. That um, I showed you a picture on the WhatsApp, Clyde, on the Cardinals list. The uh, the day date white gold with the green. Yes. The oh mint, yeah. The mint, minty yeah. green. Oh yeah. my god. Yep. The, the beautiful watch. Plus, because it's white gold, it doesn't scream, knock me over the head, and steal me, and not as loud, right? right? And. Um, and the other thing that's come down to around retail, maybe even a tiny well, no, smidge it, of it, 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 it mm -hmm. basically says, knock me over the head and take me away, but remember the safe word. <laughs> Pineapple, you know. But um, the, uh, the, the Smurf, yeah, the, the previous, the discontinued 40 oh, millimeter wow. white gold Submariner, that's back down to kind of like, you know, reasonable, well, you know, as reasonable as a $40,000 Submariner can be, but, you know. I guess we got to call that reasonable. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Mm, mm, mm. I've been also, asked this question a couple times. What's that, Clay? You go ahead. Well, also, guys, if you'd like to ha help Mark fondly remember Jupiter, you can super mm. chat now to the Jupiter <laughs> Memorial Fund. Um, <laughs> basically, it, it's going to help. That's Jupy behind me. Yep. Exactly. And also, um, also house cats abhor minotaurs so i'll tell you what that that cat you know was irritated most of his life and he lived a very long happy 20 years with me so that's why i love this picture because well and he was yeah, deaf just, and i'd always hear him squalling just without and i always started calling him ac4 yeah <laughs> yeah i forgot about that yeah i forgot about that like yeah it's true he went deaf and in the last couple of years he couldn't hear himself screaming and he did that day and night night and day Oh my God. All right. Let me answer this from um Q. Why do you love James and Sons in which location looking for a new AD? Well, I mean, you know, naturally I'm biased towards these guys because I find that they are straight shooters. They have provided me with some difficult to get watches and they have been extraordinarily nice to my, um, you know, to my audience who have called and identified themselves. By the way, I don't even think you got to say Mark Goldberg sent me. I, I don't think it hurts. It probably no. helps. I don't think it hurts. This is just the way they do business. Um, there's every kind of AD imaginable out there. Um, some of them are rude. Some of them are judgmental. Some of them will laugh at you. Some of them will come straight out and tell you, you know, you got to bribe me by buying $50,000 worth of crap that you don't want. Right. And um, th these guys will just talk turkey to you. And if they can help you, they will. And if they can't, they'll tell you that. Um, but they will take you seriously no matter how you go in there, provided you're polite and respectful. So... Um, oh, my recommendation. Fington hmm? is joining us. What's that? Fington Year is joining us. Fington Yay. I don't see him. Oh, in the uh, comments. Tiller. In the comments. Yes. He's not in the studio. Well, tell him no. to get him in the studio, Klein. Well, we'll we'll go to Fington Year's comments. I, I already have already posted the link in the Cardinal chat. Right. Thank thank you for that. That's perfect. So, um, but look, let me, let, me, know let, me, let me finish my point here. Yes. Zion, James and Son. It would be the Orland Park location, call up there or go. I mean, listen, here's the biggest deal. It's not that you can't call the AD, but 
Don't call the AD. Hey, you got a James Cameron. Hey, you got a Submariner Green. Don't do that. Um, go in there, introduce yourself, shake hands, and go at a time when you think it's likely to not be all that busy. So don't go like Saturday afternoon. You know, I don't know. Go like Wednesday in the middle of the day or after work. Just go when you know. And um, my guy over there, the manager of that place is Brian. All the sales associates are great. Just tell them I sent you. They will yeah. at least take you seriously. All right. Let's see. Where is the Vintage? Vintage, some are CD. <laughs> well, CD Peacock sold you, Vintage, Jen, and me. A um, Jen got the 36 millimeter OP with the bright blue sunray dial, and, they, and I got the 41 millimeter of the same. We call it our couple's watch, right, Jen? <laughs> it's, our, it's our couple's watch. Okay, let me pop back up here and see what's going on so we can uh, get some. Get some stuff covered here. Will I be running to my AD to grab that Pelagos? No, I have the, I have its big brother, you know. Here's the thing about that watch that you guys have to know. Um, it it's it's a very good watch. All the Pelagos line that they don't make a bad one. But when I tell you they are toolish, super chat. Hmm. There, we'll go back to that. That back. Thank you, Clyde. We'll get it in a sec. Quick sec. Uh, they're super toolish. So the uh, Black Bay 58 is going to be a little fancier. The Omega SMP is going to be much fancier. Mm. Um, so my thinking is in a, in a tutor, you work out, especially in a Pelagos, you do, you know, yard work, you work out and then, um, you know, go to the, you know, go to the prom in your Omega or your Rolex. No, the big risk. Understand, it. understand it's very, very toolish watch. Toolish or foolish? There's toolish. Are you still talking me out of buying the OP41 for 25K? No, I, I don't. I, I, I'm not sure I was trying to talk you out of it. Thurston Howell the third. I was trying to talk you into it when it was 1718, which is what I paid. Yep. November last year. And then Boy, things not is there anyone well. who doesn't like is there anyone who I love the watch? Is there anyone that you can think of that doesn't love that watch? Yeah, most people hate that watch. <laughs> like, oh, no. you, if, anyone, you love, if you like it, you're in the minority. Anyone in particular? Nope. I don't know who okay. you're referring to. Spit it out, Clyde. I don't, I don't know who you're talking about. Well, I, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I really don't. It feels aggrieved that you're showing. What? I feel aggrieved. Oh, <laughs> actually, okay. Now, you know what? Thank Just, you. I'm having, a, I'm having a slow day. <laughs> okay. Well, Clyde is referring to people is the thing that got me thrown off the Archie show was, um, you know, by the way, quick fist watch check wearing a marathon G-Star, which we will talk about yeah. a little bit more. But um, anyway, I came on to his show, um, did a quick fist watch check. It was a, uh, it was the, the Tiffany OP41 and Archie just went crazy. <laughs> he, he got real mad because, um, I don't know, I, like I had a better watch on than he did. So he started yelling more at me. more popular I, watch. And I excused myself, and then uh, well, that's true. And then I excused myself from the show, and then he banned me. So here we are, Rebel Stream number five only nine only Rebel, only Rebel, uh, Rebel. only Rebel. you know only uh, eighty nine more to go. Anyway, um, no, I think like listen here. Here's what I think. I think that OP forty one, it is discontinued. The other sizes, it, it's available in like two other sizes, and I forget which uh, they are, like 28 and 36, only in two other sizes. And those are still continuing to be made theoretically, but you actually can't buy them. Like they're, they're nowhere. But that OP41, it and they'll, I'm sure they'll discontinue soon. OP41 in production of just the, like 13, 14 months. Clyde, you know Mackenzie, and Mackenzie, when I asked him what I should do about buying that watch, when I heard through the grapevine that it was going down, you know, he's the rain man of Rolex. He started saying, oh, my God, Tiffany Dial, Tiffany Dial, Rolex, Rolex never crashes. <laughs> Just like Qantas, rain man. And he explained that um, when in the 70s, when Rolex came out with the Tiffany Dial among the Stellas, the Tiffany was in production for one year, and then they discontinued it. And he said, they're going to do it again. And they did. So I had just that small window of opportunity. Well fisted, mother. Well fisted. Yeah. Well, the all all you know, kudos to the Rolex, the the, the Rain Man of Rolex. But um, anyway, 
Um, that's when I made a video, told you people to buy it. You could have bought it for 18. It rocketed up to like 50, which was really stupid. So the fact that it's down to 25, 24, I think is a good thing. Do I think it's a good buy right now? Provided yeah. you're willing to buy and hold. Yeah, yeah. Like look 10 years ahead, five years ahead. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to, again, 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 I got to be great. Um, if you're Super buying chat. now and hoping, thank you, Clyde. If you're, if you're buying it now and hoping to resell it in six months, then I don't know. If you chase the market, it's like trying to catch a falling knife. You might get it, but you might hurt yourself. So what I would say is buy and hold. And it's a good time for that watch. Muhammad Ali, 18 pounds. Great show, guys. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Love the rope of dope. Thank you for being with us. Yep. Bet. I like the OP41, but the new red dial Omega Aquaterra with that redesigned bracelet is next up for me. Have you seen the dial? Yeah. The, listen, here's what um, here's I kind of admire what Omega has done, Clyde, in that they copied all yep. the Stella dials. That's their version of the coral red, you know, OP41. They just copied them. But like that put them right up there with like Zinn copied them and um, La Chute copied everybody copied Rolex on there. Exactly. So I don't like the copy factor on the one hand. On the other hand, they did it. They did it very very nicely, and you can actually buy it. So yes. I, I, what do you think about those Aquaterras, Clyde? Um, I like how Aquaterras actually. You know, I hate to say this, Bear Clooney actually got me onto it uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years back. And uh, there's there's two things I don't like about Aquaterra, mm. or That's one it. thing primarily. You know what that mm. is? Do you know <laughs> what it does not have on the dial? A date? No, it has a date. No, what a doesn't date. it have? What what does it not have? The words Aquaterra. <laughs> well, that doesn't bother and me. It says Omega. That's yeah. You know, that's all that I care about. What is it? What, are you afraid that you'll forget that it's an Aquaterra if it doesn't exactly. remind you on the? That's on, why. <laughs> that's why. That's why I like the um, Yacht Master 2. Because <laughs> no matter how drunk you get, you'll always remember what Rolex you're wearing. Yes, you will. Yeah, that's for sure. But that's true of all Rolex. You know, they all they all remind you which ones they okay, are. Okay, Muhammad, I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, yeah, you, uh, you are referring to um, uh, Muhammad's comment that he respects you for refusing the sermon. I, on the other hand, am still angry at you. That, oh, yeah. Thank you're you, Muhammad. That, because I didn't, flip, I didn't buy and flip it to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What is wrong with you? Let, but let me explain. So Clyde's AD offers him a sermon. It's but he but they offer it to him on a day when he's busy, and he's like, hey, nah, sell it to somebody else. And I'm like, you couldn't sell it to me and make a quick four thousand dollar profit, like and still no, give I me a deal. I was busy. I was busy. But here's what happens, guys. When when Clyde gets a little overwhelmed with caseload. Or having to go from one courtroom to the other, I know I can always tell when it, when that's happening to you, Clyde. Because when I talk to you, you're like, ah, ah, stress, stress, click. <laughs> yeah, well, and I'm saying, why are you calling me at nine o'clock? What the hell is wrong <laughs> with you? Because you always call me at like seven o'clock when I'm like still in bed, haven't even had a coffee yet. <laughs> Fair enough. But anyway, I hate um, the yeah, fact so... that the AT have, have no micro adjustments. Says the big wrist. In the AT. What's the AT? Aquaterra. Uh, or the AT. Dun, 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 dun. So what is it? Dun, dun, dun. There's no micro? There's no micro? What? So the clasp is not micro adjustable? It's, do yeah. they have half links on the bracelet, at least? No idea. See, that would bother me too, the big wrist. That would bother me a lot. Um, Recon32. Mark, what do you think about the new Seiko GMTs? I'm really tempted. Someone still to buy the orange one as a beater. Be a great beater. Yeah, you know it's not a absolutely. it's not a true GMT, but but it'll do the job. It'll do, definitely do the job. The orange is cool, Doxa esque. And uh, awesome. Clyde, the only thing I don't know is Clyde. Does that have a sapphire or a hard legs? <sighs> I think a sapphire. Recon thir Recon thirty two. Hmm. Mm hmm. Love the red aquaterra. I'm also interested in the new wine red Speedmaster 57. Mm. What do you think about the wine red? Well, that's your that's your thing. I, I think it's pretty cool, but um, the problem is, can't you buy one of those that's like pretty close in plastic for 200 bucks? 
Yeah. That would bother me. Yep. 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 Okay. So Niner says it's hard Lex. So. Well, I imagine, he, is, well, I imagine he is pretty hard after all this selection, <laughs> after all the controversy on the, the boys. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're, okay. I, th- I misunderstood what you're saying. The boys are, have spoken. They're saying it's hard Lex. Well, the only decent thing about the fact that it's hard Lex is that it's in the sports five category of mm. Rolex, which of uh, mm. Seiko, which means you can buy a crystal, a, a sapphire crystal for it for like 25 bucks and put it in yourself if you know how or have somebody do it to yourself. Oh, the big, well, so the Aquaterra has half lengths. All right. So you can kind All of right. get it close, but I, I agree. Yeah, it's no kind of micro shitty. adjustments. Bullshit. For this bullshit. day of time, it's kind of bullshit. Yeah. I think it's bullshit. At least, at least, a, at least a one, at least a one swing like a, yeah. Mm. Like, like even the date just has like a five millimeter. I want to revisit that because we're having a great show, Clyde, and you're helping me do it. Thank you. Thank Have you. I appreciate seen. that. There's some house asking me how I got that lucky. Well, Clyde just didn't want to do the Minotaur show today. He wanted to do mine. (laughs) If Batman is discontinued, the left hand GMT will be something to ask for guys, collectors, peace for sure. Okay. Well, what do you think? And this gives me the opportunity to ask you all about the Batman and you know what's going to come up. So Clyde, talk to me about the Batman first. Okay, if the Batman it. is discontinued, it. if the Batman is discontinued, they'll come out with something else. It'll be another color. It'll be the thin mint cookie. It'll be <laughs> I, I don't know. It'll be something. They're not going to quit making. You know, they're not going to sit back and say, yeah, we're going to quit making. You know, we're thinking about we've been, been making GMT watches for like the last seven years, and uh, screw it. Clyde, we're how many times do they? Clyde, how many times can they discontinue the Batman? Because they've already discontinued it and then yeah. resurrected it like a year later. Yep. You know, yep. it was the Batgirl, which, by the way, grew on me. I kind of like Jubilee bracelets now. You know, at first I made yeah. fun of them. Now I kind of like it. Well, Clyde, you know what I'm going to talk about now, don't you? Um, Come on, Jubilee. you know. You know. No. Jubilee. Yeah. Nope. It's, it's, nope. It's, it's, nope. Nope. Actually, nope. 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 Mark has relatives living in, in Joplin and Fort Smith. They're Jubilees. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about the discontinued Batman and uh, and your retail experience. Um, which, I have no idea is, what you're talking about. Well, Clyde's called Stickergate. No, I don't, I don't recall anything like Sticker. No, I don't know. No, no. Well, guys, tell me in the comments if you want to hear about Stickergate. And you know, somebody super chat a couple of bucks. And and I, despite Clyde's you know irascible nature, I'll tell the Stickergate story. But I know I know you don't want me to, do you, Clyde? Well, mm. look, Clyde. You know, one of your bi- biggest critics is paying you a compliment. I think that's very nice. Well, unfortunately, I am a. Uh, what am mm-hmm. I? What am I? For? I forget what I am again. A. Darn it! What are you, a rancher? <laughs> no. No, yeah. I'm a you contrarian. Forgot what you are. You no, are I'm a contrarian. contrarian. Yeah. So, so so now that Clyde, now that Ed said you're behaving well, you're going to want to stop. Please don't. I'm going to have yeah, I'm going to have to behave very very badly. Now. Clyde, I want you to be a naughty 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 boy, Clyde. Be naughty, do it now. Um okay. Recon 32, the 41 millimeter GMT with Coke and LN Lunette Noir, that is the black. Um, yes. Mm. That would be a black bezel only would be cool. Well, then how would it be a Coke if it was an LN? I, I'm very confused. Give us a break from the. I guess he wants a Coke, as opposed to a Pepsi and a Batman. And people been oh, yeah. asking for. A Coke we all want a Coke. For a long, everybody, you know, everybody's been asking for the Coke. Exactly, and the Pope. Mm. Hey, I heart sushi right? wants to hear. I heart sushi wants to hear about Sticker Gate. No, and no, 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 no. I, I, I don't think you should talk about it unless there's, you know, I think there should be I a did. little bit of a. What's what's the word I'm thinking of? Hey, oh, yeah. Let me what my chat. let me what. Let me wet my beak. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Clyde, do you even know what that is? Because I myself do not. Yes. It is a new, uh, it's an Omega. It's like a, re- they brought an old reference back, kind of like mm. a sector dial. I actually think it's an attractive looking watch. I, oh, yeah. I, I like it. But I don't know if, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of difference, though, between when I pay full MSRP for it and sell stacks mm. and get probably fisted. That would be, and I'd be on the, I'd be on the, I'd be on the line, uh, fence post, uh, the fence about that one. 
So like kind of wait and see how they how they go and what the discounts might or might not be. Exactly. Thank you. So, so that means we just have to wait for the Hodinky review and uh, Tim Masso sure. and his little itty bitty scrawny wrist. Okay. Thurston Howell says, lucky that AC3 fired you. You can't fire me. I quit. That's what happened pretty much. Oh, hey, Marcelo um, time is on. Should we let Marcelo on? Well, I, I don't see him here. And Clyde, I'm enjoying my time with okay. you so very much. Let's let's invite Marcelo another time. But all right. Uh, but he, he appeared uh, a few a few rabble streams ago, and and I did enjoy him. Super chat. Um, super chat. Super. Oh, okay. Okay. So, oh, there is a super chat. Stupid chat. Muhammad Ali. Also, and also, if you only pound. if you only talk about the time mm. I stupidly walked away from a sermon recently you should also i just told that work. story and i'm still well, angry about you don't, but, don't make me but, they, that. but look there's also a controversy so you should super chat it so mark will talk about it again and get even All angrier right. we and can talk about it when we got you even angrier mm, mm, mm. well uh well muhammad here here is what happened clyde I, i'm gonna set it up and then you can you know like spike it in yes so clyde does clyde causes ad and they have a batman now this was years ago when 2016 20 okay perfect so you still remember 2016 seems like yesterday that the older i get the more like things happen quickly marcelo we're gonna have There's you on more. next time not today yesterday, but next time you did, more you did great when you when we you were on before but clyde and i are gonna ride this out together Ew. <laughs> i didn't say rub this out together I oh, okay good, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, so the year, Sicily, 2016. Clyde walks into an AD with like a fat, chubby roll of $100 bills because he's there to purchase and pick up his new Batman, which was the original Batman, which, which I also bought, except for I bought it like under MSRP. Probably about a year later, when they were trading a little under MS, I bought mine for like seventy five hundred. I think like mm. eight was eighty two hundred. What was what was MSRP, Clyde? Right around eight. Right. Oh yes. Only right. Only two thousand sixteen, which seems like fairly recently. In my Mark was so day. excited to bring it back to his Model A Ford and sit with it, admiring <laughs> the rumble seat. But there we were, 2016, and uh, and a GMT was eight grand, and you could buy one. You could even just walk in and and get a Batman, and that's what Clyde did. And what Clyde Clyde knew the amount of money that it was, so Clyde put a stack of fatties, put a put a stack of Benjamins, a big a big wad of dead presidents, smacked it on the glass top counter. But this was 2016. This was the first year that ADs had been instructed by Rolex to peel the stickers <laughs> off of watches. So they bring out Clyde's, you know, they bring out Clyde's watch. They bring out the, the, the warranty card. Now in those days, either the salesperson would write your name on the warranty card, or they would ask you to write your name on the warranty card with a, with a Sharpie. Clyde, did they write it or did you write it? They wrote it because they wanted to be able to read it. <laughs> okay. So they wrote, but your name, they wrote your name on the card, correct? Yes. I think there should be okay. more super chats for all the follow-up questions. No, no, no. I, I, well, we'll deal with the follow-up questions in a minute. Yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we'll make them pay. But for the moment, let's keep going. So now Clyde's name is on the card. And then, Clyde, pick it up from there. What happened? And they said, "No, we're going to we're going to spill the stickers off." I said, "No, I'm going to take it back and film myself taking the stickers off." We have to take the stickers off it's because, guys, you got to understand you can't do that because it's my watch. I paid for it. It's right. like, well, nobody, I've tendered no, no the cash. Said, yeah. Well, we haven't accepted the cash. That's what's still on the front counter. If they'd moved it to the back counter, I could say, "Ah." And what, said, this is okay, we're, we're, hold on, we're a timeout, timeout. So, guys, what you have to understand is this was the exact second when right after, probably one of the very first watches where Rolex ADs had been informed by Rolex reps, we want you to peel the stickers off. Rolex Geneva instructed the rep to tell the AD, peel off the stickers, because they were tired of seeing new watches come up on the gray market in full stickers. 
And so one way that Rolex was supposed to like bullshit combat the gray market, that's just paying a little lip service to, you know, just so they could say they did something, you know, was they informed their ADs. And because prior to, listen, guys, I, I'm young enough to remember when you get on an airplane with a paper ticket in somebody else's name and you never went through any kind of security. Things have changed over the years. And one of them is the de-stickering. But the first guy who got like fisted by de-stickering was, was, you know, was the other, was, was the fellow on the other end of this live stream right now. So Clyde, did they just start peeling it or did they tell you they were going to? What happened? I said, no, you're not. I said, that's my watch. I've paid for it. And they said, well, technically we haven't, we haven't accepted the money because you know, the, the money is still <laughs> kind of resigned to you. And I said, well, if you're going to, then I guess is it, you can do sticker your watch if you want to. I'm going to take my money and go somewhere else. <laughs> And now wait, now explain to me when, when you said that, was your hand, did, were, were both, was, were their hand and your hand both shooting towards the pile of money? No, they weren't even looking at, they weren't even looking at the money. So, but so they were smart, they, like, so they're smart because they know if they, if they had taken that and moved it out of reach for me, that means that they've accepted it. And that's like, well, the, the okay, guy is Clyde, you, see, yeah. you know, Clyde, Clyde's a lawyer in Oklahoma. The purchase was made in Oklahoma. Clyde knows the UCC, the Uniform Code, you know, of, of conduct. You know, the, the Uniform Commercial Code in uh, in his state. And so, um, you know, he's he's going a little legal here. But what really happened was Clyde when they said no, we have to de-sticker this watch, and they started literally peeling off stickers. Clyde's little hand shot out onto that onto that glass counter, and like snatched away. His eight thousand dollars, and now tell me, Clyde, did you like stomp out, or what? You know what happened? No, I pretty much stomped down. I said, "Yep." I can't believe this is gone. this is bullshit. I can't believe. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, and it's just like, wow, that really makes me. Feel... So yeah. anyway, that's when Clyde left with his eight thousand dollars. He left. The, the AD with a de-stickered watch that once they've de-stickered it, they can't re-sticker it. Worse yet, okay, from the standpoint of the AD, the card. Rolex sends one card per watch with the serial yeah. number of the watch on the card, and now it's got Clyde's name on it, which means, theoretically, they cannot sell that watch as new. It is Except at they, least... they assured me that they did, though. They said, what we did is we sent, uh, you know, they said we sent, we had to go all the way to New York, but they sent us another card. I'm like, wow. Yeah. I'm sure it took a few weeks. So, anyway, it was yep. a, Oh, well, tough shit. Just... That's your point. <laughs> well, yeah. And it's just like, I'm sorry, but it wasn't, it wasn't even, there wasn't, it's like, look, we got to do this. But it, was like, but it was like, we're doing this. I'm like, excuse, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> You know, guys, Clyde does not like to be told what to do unless you are a judge. You know, if you're if you're if you're a judge, he'll begrudgingly do it because the only option of what, not doing what you're told is going to jail for criminal contempt. Yeah. You know, but if you are not judge, you know, do not tell Clyde what to do. You, you must have been a mother's dream as a child, Clyde. <laughs> Where do you think I got it from? <laughs> Okay, How's the so he, here's the Negroni is, is I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a little happy to have it because yeah. I've been out for a week and I've been substituting. Yesterday I got desperate and I poured Jim Beam into Sprite. And let me tell you. So it, it was Stickergate got out in word, literally. I, I was told they were <laughs> literally, I was mocked around the globe. Word, word went out far and wide. But he, well, be, because here's what happened. Within like an hour of, of you doing that, or realistically within a, within like a couple of few months, that watch skyrocketed from eight thousand dollars to like twelve. Yeah, on the gray market. So you left all that money on the table. I mean, you might have snatched your eight, but you you left at least four or five thousand dollars on the table. You know, due to its yeah. immediate re increase in resale value because of the stickers. <laughs> Except I also took that money and I bought the 1530 and the 1630. I got the rare birds within a week. Well, so, you did. Now, let me ask you. So, yeah, you, you you came out all right. But let me ask you one other, one other famous GMT story, um, another famous Clyde GMT story. And, and, and in this one, Clyde, you are not the anti-hero. You are not the schmuck. Um, that You are not the hunting wascally wabbits. <laughs> you are actually, you know, you come out on top in this one. Um, and... The, 
<laughs> and that is, was, was Stickergate before or after you bought Don Haynes' black, black, black cool. GMT for a discount cool. price and flipped it for a profit in like 24 hours? Well, I, yeah, because I got, <laughs> I, got I got the original Kermit with it. Hold on a second. Ed Hammond says I'm enjoying this a little too much. Ed, yes. I am sorry, but this is one of the funniest men on earth. If you just Ed, get to know him. Ed, seriously, why are you mad at him enjoying it? <laughs> give, him a, give, him, give him a chance. Your boyfriend? Because he what? doesn't like because he doesn't like you, Clyde. That's why. But right. I myself personally love you. I'm and, I'm personally indifferent towards Ed. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. But I you are not indifferent towards me nor me towards you. We have a love. No, that's love true. Love. Yes. Okay. And so, you see, guys, uh, unlike other channels, we actually talk to each other on a regular basis. We annoy we each other on a regular basis. <laughs> we do. This man tries to call me pre coffee, and I just won't have it. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so uh, so this was, and then later, so what you mean is later, um, when Don Haynes bought a black GMT, decided like 20 minutes after he got it home that he didn't like it. He sold it to you. You got the watch, called the buddy, and had it flipped for a profit. In how long after you received it? <laughs> how long, Clyde? I did can't it remember. Years? And then, and then I regretted it, so I went down and got Dudley's. You got what? I, I got another uh, espresso. Oh. <laughs> espresso. <laughs> how much did you make and on by, that one? Because I. By the, way, and by the way, Mark, let me also yeah. say. I yes. also called that it was going to be discontinued. Did I not? Yeah. Well, why didn't you? You did. Uh, that's did. true. You you, you did. You did. You did call that. But that's and then why, I told you. That's you why I still cared about Rolex. Well, and you you were you flipped those two espressos when you knew they were going to be discontinued, and if you'd have held them, you'd have made even more. But you didn't care. You were you, you just like the quick flip. You know. Um, All right. All right. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa! Stop the clock. guys. Look, the super chats mm. are really dying down. So. <laughs> so you know keep up the good work fellas listen um here's the deal um Thank why you. don't i wear rolex i'm clyde yours your rationale is entirely different but let me tell you what mine is my reason for not wearing rolex anymore is i still love rolex i still think it's collectible i still want to talk about it i still want to you know like just bathe myself in the concept of what for me is the, mm. the finest mm. brand of watch made. Now, I know there's better horology, but there's not a better brand if you follow me. The problem is they are so often stolen right now right. that you walk out of the house with a Rolex, you have a giant target on your back. And I know there's a lot of guys like our friend Ron the Shrink and a lot of you guys who say, well, yeah. just conceal carry. And um, look, fellas, I'm a, I'm a gun owner. I am not a um, I am not an anti-gun guy. The Second Amendment is written right into the Constitution, and I have availed myself of rights. So but you're I don't care. Uh, you know, no, no, no. But you I'm know, listen. Like, uh, listen, I I, I well, just we're I not have gonna my, we're not going to go. Got my, no, let's not. But I have my. Let's just say, well, Clyde, you, you have an aversion to armaments ever since you dropped the howitzer shell and nearly blew up an entire platoon. You know, back in back in your army career, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I, I'm a gun owner, so I'm not like anti-gun. Sorry, um, that is that is a lie. That is okay. That is I know lie. it wasn't a howitzer. What was it? Was what was it, it, it would be a battery, not a company. A battery. Thank you. Would have been a salt and battery if the goddamn thing had gone off, Clyde. No, it would have been. No, they would have been like. No. And I know it wasn't your fault because the guy throwing it to you threw it up, threw it to you wrong, right? Go ahead and defend yourself. He threw no, it no, no. Actually, it, no. It's, it's this thing called inertia because I was in the <laughs> yeah, middle. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, I'd like you to get out your physics books. Clyde's going to give us a lesson on how to drop a howitzer shell now using inertia as the excuse. Continue, please. No, because you have to pick that thing up and you have to swing it. It is, it's 150, it's 100, yeah, it's 155 millimeters howitzer shell. It's heavy. Swing your partner, it, dosi, swing your partner, dosi, do Exactly. Now, so, and they called out a halt order. Basically, stop what you're doing. So, the guy Whee! grabbed my arm. He did not grab the shell. <laughs> so, the shell is going forward with heavy, with its own momentum. My arm stops because it's grabbed, and the shell keeps going. But, like, leaped where, out. Where to, went, where to go? <laughs> where to go? And it, and it just jumped right out of my arms, and just, <laughs> it was like variable time, and it just, literally, dink, 
Like right, just uh, just explain to me <laughs> if those things have like a do they have a percussion cap or a firing no. pin or or a delayed variable no, if, fuse? If that if that had been yeah if that had been like a point contact or you know yeah, yeah it would we'd be yeah. What well, millimeter shell? What millimeter? What, I, I told you twice, mother. One hundred fifty-five millimeter, the biggest one the army had, except for the eight inch. I know you prefer eight inches, but. 155 millimeter would have like that big around Clyde, something like that. Bigger. <laughs> brag. Don't brag, yeah. Clyde. <laughs> In other words, basically the kind of thing that you'd feed into a tank, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, no, it's actually bigger. Usually tanks at the time had like uh 120 millimeter. This was 155 millimeter. Okay. All I can say is I'm glad it didn't go off because Clyde, you were right there. I although I would have loved oh, to we see were all. on your in, in the and our NCO, the the, the <laughs> our NCO with us looked down, saw what was happening, and he levitated. He flew straight out that hatch. Did everybody he, run? What? Did you all run, or did you follow him, or what happened? Uh, no, we just picked it up, and it went dink, 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 dink. We're like, it literally time slowed. It was just like slow motion. We picked, we just put it up. And we just put it on the loader, on the, and we all just open the back door. Is that, and we is all that as close out. as you've ever come? Is that as close as you've ever come to death, Clyde? Oh wait, here's a wait. Rancher still rocking the beard. Need evidence? Sure enough. Oh, no. actually, Clyde, I have not rocked the beard for. No, see what happened. I I when I uh, went to the hospital the first time when I actually had COVID, in between Thanksgiving and Christmas of 2020, I had the beard. That was when I dispatched EMS to your door. That yes. That. That's what that was. I, I and then, me, me yeah. and a few other, you know, of Clyde's YouTube. But afterwards, it was like right, almost right before Christmas. I was walking around, barely able. And like kids, little kids were losing their effing minds when they saw me. Mm. Oh, because they thought you were Santa. Oh, yeah. They thought big time. Ah, it's him. It's like, no, 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 no. Sorry. I'm not going to visit your house because your mommy and daddy voted for Trump this year. Mm. But, uh, uh, listen, uh, Trump King wears fakes, and um, can I just tell you that's nasty? That's nasty, yeah. vicious yeah. vinyl. I don't, I don't think you should yeah. do it. And I'm for two reasons. There's two reasons. Number one, those things are going to give you wrist cancer. Okay, so there's that. And then, you know, wouldn't the irony be if you're wearing a fifty dollar Rolex and you still get knocked over the head because some idiot thought that it was a Rolex? So yep. there's no win. There is no win in wearing a fake Rolex whatsoever. There's only well, unless in, unless you're doing it in Vietnam, then there's wins all over the place. Mm. Yes, Seiko Bluna or Black? Well, I mean they're both good. I have the Bluna. I like the Bluna. So I got to say the Bluna. The only thing is, is that you got to order on a bracelet because the, the the straps are crap. Yeah, they, they only come on a strap, so you got to get a bracelet for it. But honestly, the Seiko tuna crap straps are crap anyway. So I have my Bluna on a strap code 22 millimeter straight edge adjustable ratcheting, and that's the one you want, man. That's freaking right. awesome. Yes, oh, good god. So basically, Clyde, you not only don't have a beard, but you're like super into shaving equipment, yes. Uh, Yes. You, and what did you buy today? I believe you told me that you bought something interesting today in the way of a razor. Yeah, I actually got the Henson shaving uh, titanium with the soup with the aggressive uh, head. The aggressive head. You, you like a great you like aggressive head, Clyde? Is that something the guys here need to need to know about? No, it's, it's, it, and it, you know, it's just like there's mild, there's moderate, then there's aggressive. In other words, how how much blade do you feel? How much how much um, mm -hmm. How much hair does it take off at once? I'm not shaving that much these days. Every once a week or so, I hit the neck beard, and that's really it. So, I, and I love I love the the short, tight beard. It's yeah. right between stubble and beard because it's like you know pretty easy maintenance. Super chat, super chat. Dun, 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 dun. Big beans. Yeah. PJ Schling says we need two the Second Amendment concealed carry here in the UK. You do. Rolex yeah. robbers everywhere here. You, you guys are, especially London and uh, Manchester, some of the bigger cities, some of the worst Rolex thieves ever. You not only don't have concealed carry, you don't have gun ownership. Guys, I don't want to turn it into a Second Amendment debate, but it is what it is. We have the right here 
So fine. But I got to say. Actually, they need a constitution, first of all. That, well, they got the Magna Carta, Clyde. Scott Tarlow, if you pull out your gun to save your Rolex, that's stupid. And I'm kind of with you because you could turn. I mean, I, I listen, it's going to this this kind of thing is going to depend state to state. But Clyde, let's just talk Oklahoma. I know this isn't proper, proper research, legal advice, but off the top of your head, a guy is robbing me for my Rolex, implied threat of violence, no visible weapon, and I shoot him. Am I justified or unjustified? No visible weapon, no, unjustified because he's not using that. He doesn't appear to be dead, using deadly force. There you go. No, so I got to tell you. Right? No, if, go on the other hand, you reasonably believe that he was posed a significant hazard to your life or your health. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this sometimes this is going to fall into a gray area. And by the way, that's in Oklahoma where men are men and sheep are afraid, you know? Right. <laughs> and by that, I mean. You know, I, I, I'm going to make the assumption that Oklahoma is um, no, no, on the, the other side hand, of personal On the rights. other hand, we do have Make My Day. So if you're in your house and you're wearing your Rolex and some damn, if some damn fool comes in, okay, you know, blow them away. So, let, so actually, the question, because um, I just saw this videotape of the guy. This there's a, It's all over the news lately, guys. So I'm sure you can find it on any news service. It is a, a ring camera videotape where... Ooh. The 22-year-old kid had been broken up. The girl broke up with this 22-year-old boy, but like a year, year and a half earlier. So this is old news already, but he shows up on our doorstep, ringing the bell, ringing the bell, ringing the bell. He's on a ring camera. The parents are in there telling him, go away. We're going to call 911. If you don't leave, you're trespassing, leave the porch. Yeah. Not only does he not leave, but he opens, you can see it all on camera. He opens the, he opens the screen door. And then he starts like shouldering and bashing his way, you know, through the door. And you can hear the dad on the other side saying, I want you to leave. We've called 911. I have a gun. Leave the porch. Stop. But this kid has broken the jam, which broke the deadbolt. Dad's holding the door back now, but he can't really hold it back is the story because it's, yeah. the door is opening. And he fires two or three shots through the door. And you can see all this on camera. I mean, it's really pretty upsetting stuff. And the kid, like, you know, he's moaning and yelling, screaming because he's shot and he dies on the driveway. He manages to stumble, you know, about 20 feet away onto the driveway where he collapses and ultimately dies before EMS gets there or is declared dead. Um, this, I, I, don't, I don't remember the state, but it was declared, uh, it, it went to a grand jury and grand jury de determined that they were not going to indict the shooter, which was the homeowner. And right. um, I, I don't know. Listen, I, I don't know all the facts other than what I read on the news. But my opinion, if you are breaking into somebody's house, there is an there's an implicit threat of uh, you yeah, know, bodily the, harm. A man's home in his castle. That's right. So what they uh, I, I've always heard, if you shoot somebody who's trying to run out of your house, you're better off dragging them back in. I'm not going to touch that statement. Of course not. You're, you're an officer of the court, Clyde. You can't do that. But I can see his avatar winking right now. Right. Understood. Guys, yeah. Can we please have another super chat? Please have another super chat just to help fund the Rebel Alliance. Guys, look. Well, it is true. The X-Wings and, and the Sex Wings, they, they, you know, they require funds to drive, to fly. If well, us, every time you super chat... A minotaur loses a horn. Um, Ed right. uh, says that he would Loose shoot a guy who's robbing of a Seiko. Well, you know, here's the thing. It, theoretically, you are not allowed to kill people. Uh, and this is pretty much, I'm sure, most states, if not all. You're not allowed to kill people to protect property, but to protect life and limb. You know, so I don't want to kill anybody, guys, for any reason whatsoever. But I also don't want to be clubbed over the head from behind. You know, the whole scenario that concealed carry is like this... Um, Cure all, I think, is false. Um, no, there's a on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, if the person was carrying a weapon, that really does raise the stakes. Like whether any sort of weapon, whether it was like a machete or gun, horns, mm -hmm. you know, literally. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, I think most. We're talking, of course, hypothetically. I think most Rolex robberies are armed robberies, but um, very typically they're getting the drop on you. And, um, and, and and concealed carry in a lot of these cases is not going to help. And in fact, could give you a false sense of security, I think. Don't, don't get me wrong. The law is the law. I'm not here to debate that. I'm a gun owner. 
I'm just telling you, um, typically, in, if when you start researching Rolex thefts, they are usually getting you by surprise and getting the drop on you. You don't have the time in most cases to uh, to draw or even necessarily defend yourself. Right. Sibbers, my friend was robbed for his BLNR last year with a machete to his throat. Four guys in Bach of us surrounded him, even if he was armed, he wouldn't have had a chance. This kind of thing happens. It happens everywhere. Wait, four guys in Calatravas? Were they mm. all girl sized <laughs> Calatravas? Well, those are I, I, I think I think he's talking about Turkish pastries. Okay. Um, if someone breaks into my house in New Hampshire, oh, I can leave oh, your yeah, head things, up. Yeah. Well, that's true in, in a lot of places. Uh, if not, if not in most or all places, I'm not sure. You're breaking into my house. I think uh, you have a legitimate right of defense. The the castle. No. If you can you break into someone's motel Castle room? Defense. Can you break into someone's motel room and slap their livestock? That's what I want to know. Good question. I would not want anyone thinking if they break into my house, there will be a Rolex as a reward. That's the only brand they've heard of. Absolutely, completely. Mister, Mister, take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Learn to fly so free. Horns. And when we hear no, okay, go sorry. Horns. 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 All right, all right. <laughs> you can be safe with the Megan Panerai. I don't wear Rolex with a T-shirt. I don't wear these days. When I wear Rolex, um, I'll wear it um, someplace simple, safe. You know, I'm I'm very judicious where I wear it. Very, very judicious. <laughs> I live in the UK. I'm legally obliged to curl up on a ball on a ball on the floor. <laughs> you but you barely have anything to defend yourselves with over there. Call it Travis. <clears throat> I would rather lose my lose my Rolex than kill a criminal. You know, here's the screwed up thing, Scott. I'm, I think I'm in agreement with you. Don't get me wrong. Uh, like I think people have a absolutely have a right to defend themselves. So I'm not I'm not here to argue against that. I believe in that, and I'm a gun owner. But I just really would rather not kill anybody. And the only the only reason I can even, the only point at which I can humanly even imagine that because like I got to live with it after is. Um, <laughs> if I was defending my own or, or somebody else's life, you know, so so those guys, OK, who um, come across and there have been a few of these cases lately. They're in a mall. There's a shooter, you know, and they and they take that person out. Those those people are heroes. Um, those, those people are heroes, in my opinion. They're protecting life and limb, not, you know, not not ticking timepieces, you know. Man, I, my heart goes out for those guys. Clyde, I, I, was in, uh, I was in the grocery store today, and a guy zipped past me, an older, real, you know, an elderly gentleman, zipped past me in a, in, a, in a cart, and he was wearing a hat with all kinds of, you know, egg salad and stuff all over it. And as he went by, what I saw was Korea, Korean War veteran. And I, had he been going slower or had he been stopped, I would have I stopped him and talked to him because I've been to the, the Korean War museum and memorial in seoul korea and i've seen the hall of honor where the names of dead american gis are inscribed on 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 floor to ceiling tablets and there's thousands of them thousands of them it, it, it's very very long haul every name of every dead american gi um thousands tens of thousands of them are you know are there and i would have stopped and talked to this guy and but, uh, he was zipping pretty quick Afraid I'd lose a little. Super chats. Super chat. Super chat. Oh my God. Look, Clyzy. Can you both give us a state of the collection just to make the Minotaur jealous? The answer well, is yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes, we can. There we go. Well, I got about 50 watches, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood. I haven't really fully counted. I, I kind of don't want to count. I'm afraid. But unlike Clyde, unlike you, Clyde. I would say of my 40 watches, of 50, let's call it 50 watches, probably of my 50 watches, I think like a full 30 of them are shitters. Seiko, stuff that I love, by the way, that I really get a lot of enjoyment out of. Um, and then there's some mid-tier stuff like Tudor, Omega, Marathon, Breitling. And then, you know, I got, I got some Rollies. I got some Rollies. Um, JL unit, every time you super chat, a minotaur gets slapped. Well, you know, he loses heart. And every time you super chat, a minotaur loses a wing. So believe me, we appreciate it. And guys, it's not about the money. It's about the passion here. 
So thank you. Thank you to all of you guys. Um, honest thoughts, Clyde, on the TX TSO PRX and the revival of TSO. Hugely popular. TSO, they're making all the right moves. There's TSO. a lot of watch brands. There are a lot TSO. of watch brands. Yeah, yeah. even long jeans. Mm. Ones that used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Long jeans are reviving a little bit with a few things, but TSO. So I am not a big fan of the PRX, either automatic, the three hander. Um, but that chronograph, uh -huh. that chronograph, on uh -huh. the end, it, listen, the PRX at its purchase price, the, you know, the three hander at its purchase price. I mean, you know, you got lots and lots of choices there, but that chronograph, that is a standalone. There's nothing like it for that kind of money. That's what do you think? Clyde? You're dumb. If you don't, if you have the chance to get one, get one. Yeah. I'm with you. I don't think they're going to be terribly hard to get. I think they'll make a lot of them. Let's hope. Why can't you say bitch slapped on Super Chat? Just say BS and I'll know what you mean. <laughs> Huge crime wave at the moment here in the UK. Massive gangs working in organization. The piece of police are at a loss. London is a hellhole. That's a little bit like LA, um, San Francisco, uh, Chicago. You know, there's, I, I don't, there's a lot of terrible things happening. Well, um, see, that also happened. That's the result of a recent outbreak they had of mad cow disease. <laughs> especially, in Heathrow, especially in Heathrow. Listen here, regard. Let, let's narrow it down to Rolex a little bit. Let me let me just kind of clue you guys in why I'm wearing more Omega um, when I want to feel fancy, and when I don't need to feel fancy, my Zin 104 or my Marathon GSAR. Why those are kind of like my favorite watches these days. You go, let's say, to a restaurant, but like a nice restaurant where you should feel safe because it's a nice up, upscale restaurant. But at the upper scale restaurants, they have upper scale, upscale patrons. And so here's what you don't know. The cashier, you. You. the bartender, no. the bus boy. <laughs> what are you saying, Clyde? You, 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 I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Super chat. Exactly. So, all right, we'll come back to my, we'll come back to my diatribe. 1x, $5. Do you have any recommendations on safe insurance or other ways to protect one's watches at home or while traveling? Not asking about weapons. Yeah, because I'm not like big on weapons to protect watches. That's just me. They get the drop on you anyway. Let me finish my previous thought. They have spotters. The busboy, the waiter, you just yep. don't know. Spotters. That guy drops a dime because these watches are super easy to identify. He yep. drops a dime on somebody and then there's a motorcycle tandem that gets you a block away when you're on your way back to find your car, you know, and yep. they have the complete element of surprise and it's multiples. It's not one guy where you got a chance. It's a guy in front, a guy behind your concealed carry, not going to help you at that point. So anyway, terrible. It's a terrible situation. Okay. So insurance, first off insurance costs. If I remember correctly, you, you I'm going to get you close, but I don't think you can really quote me either. <laughs> I don't think you can get me right. Okay. I want to say insurance on watches. First, you need an appraisal. So you'll have to take your, you have to take your rollies or whatever your stuff is. You're going to have to take it to a, um, a proper, um, a proper um, um, appraiser. Most of your Rolex ADs are also appraisers, right? Clyde, mm -hmm. you, you made a video about that years ago on your channel, right? The insurance oh, appraiser. Remember. You yeah. Did. So you'll go in, you'll drop off your watch. They'll keep it for a couple of days. Then they'll give you a bona fide insurance appraisal because nobody, no insurance company is going to let you insure a watch that possibly you don't own. Possibly it's fake, you, you know, might be worth less than what you're saying um, because then their risk of loss is way too high. So yeah. you're going to have to get the insurance appraisal. Because they won't, they won't verify. Most Rolex ADs will not verify watches but they will give insurance appraisals that right so it kind of amounts to the same thing except for they just figured a way to charge you for it and yeah, um, okay. yeah, why, right. should, why, why shouldn't they i guess right. okay so let's call it a hundred dollars 125 dollars a watch they're going to appraise it for you now you can call your insurance agent hey i've got these watches the the appraisal yeah. say they're worth this i want to insure you're going to uh, pay roughly ten dollars yeah. the thousand for a rider a lot of people make the mistake of believing that their watches will automatically be insured under their contents clause in their regular homeowners or renters insurance. But if you read your homeowners or renters insurance policy, 
you're almost certainly going to find that certain items are written down to a very low level, such as jewelry, for example, and watches are going to get classified in that category. And so you'll be covered for like less your deductible, maybe the first typically say $2,000 worth of loss. But you know, if you lost a day date, that's worth $40,000. They're going to give you a two last year deductible, which is five hundred dollars. So they're going to give you fifteen hundred bucks. You won't feel better. But if you're going to insure that forty thousand dollar day date at ten dollars a thousand, you're going to pay four hundred dollars per year in insurance for that thing. A lot of people don't want to do it, so they would prefer to use a safe or the bank vault, which is what I do. I keep my right. where you keep your rollies, Clyde. I know they're not in your sock drawer. Are they in the bank? Yes. Same here. We don't want them at home. We don't even want them in a safe at home. We want them in the bank off premise. That's what I do too. Um, so, so and then if you listen, had, if you're, uh huh. I'm oh, sorry. It's, it's actually MQ had a good watch question. Let's go We're going to get to it. We're almost done here. But like, let's say you insure oh, that data. I got it. There's this client. God, I'm going to go fuck. answer your call, Clyde. Pop back in if you can. If not, thank you for joining us, Clyde. Well, you, you can mute yourself and see what you got to do. Okay. Clyde's a, Clyde's a criminal defense attorney. So when, you, you know, when they call, he's got to answer. They could be getting slapped around by the police right at this moment. Remember, no self-snitching, guys. You need Clyde on your side. Okay. So um, listen, if you're paying $400 a year, or $400 a year to ensure you know, that one day date in 10 years, that's $4,000. So you just have to really... You got to think on it. Do you want to do it or not? The other thing you got to think about is what does that insurance cover? Coverage is not useful unless it covers what they call mysterious disappearance. Now, I'm not an insurance agent. This is just generalized knowledge that I'm giving you. Mysterious disappearance is different than, you know, like theft where there's a police report that there was a robbery in front of witnesses. Mysterious disappearance is you're an idiot and you leave it in your hotel room and it just disappears from your hotel room. Um, and then you can't find it and it's gone and you got to report missing, stolen, and that's mysterious disappearance. And if that, if you're not, if you're not covered for that, then it's inadequate insurance. And, um, and not only that, but like, I will tell you from, from experience that I have, having been a, uh, an expert witness once in a trial, um, what's the insurance? The insurance company, hang on, Clyde, the insurance company, if they don't want to pay on the loss, if they find something, you know, hinky suspicious, you know, sus about the, about the loss, they will deny coverage. And then you got to sue them to try and get coverage. A dollar 99, Mr. C, I mean, watch munch a dollar 99. Thank watch you. Watch. Insurance is expensive. Well, sure it is. Sure it is because, you know, they're insuring you against all kinds of risk. Austin Daniels, Clyde, I don't know what happened to Austin, but I, I'll tell you, there have been points of time where I've gone off the grid for six, seven months at a time. Yep. You know, sometimes we got to go earn a living or we get busy. You know? Yeah. Or, you know, the, the thing is, though, sometimes. I, should we talk about his secondary identity? <laughs> yeah. I, now I now you're, you, you, you've gone off the reservation, Clyde, but continue. Oh, well, you know, like I said, Austin, actually, he's actually a bona fide superhero. We oh, yeah, yeah. Much, yeah we don't, he's, we, actually, we can't really. he's actually mullet man. We can't talk about it. Watch oh, Munch says he feels safer in Vietnam than in the United States. And I, you know what? I Having been to Vietnam, I agree with you. I mean, yeah. I, I really that? saw very little street crime there. I mean, you know, this is what happens when you have a communist government. And, and a million fakes everywhere. Throughout Southeast Asia, you know, fakes yeah. are literally everywhere. Have you seen reservation dogs, by the way? Mark, move to Singapore. You can wear a Rolex safely. Peaceful, gun-free country, low crime with a lot of dog ownership. Just don't chew gum and spit it on the street or you will be flogged. But I know what you mean. Um, in Southeast Asia, is very safe for Rolex. Yeah. You have low street crime. Um, I mean, you can get into trouble in Southeast Asia, but generally speaking, you got to be an idiot. you got to do stupid things to get in trouble. There. So I agree right. with that. Guys, while we're chit-chatting right now, do me a quick solid favor. Smash lick like the, the thumbs up button. Lick it. Do it. Lick it. Hit the thumbs up button for me. 
that I will super appreciate. If you're not a uh, subscriber here, then quick do it. And also hit the notification bell so you know when myself and guests like Clyde Anderson, the rancher, uh, are going to do a live stream. You'll be, you will be notified. Yeah, this was a terrible story, Mr. Mister. I often think about James Gandolfini dying of a heart attack while someone, allegedly a paramedic, I think it was kind of, I think he pled out. I think he pled guilty. Um, took his the Submariner off his wrist as he was dying, which he did do. Died. Broke my heart. Ter people are awful, you know? Listen, yeah, my grandmother... I, 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 took, I, I muted myself, kind of looked around the other channel just now. Oh, my mm. God. I, is it a... Is it's it a cluster? Than, it's, it's is it a cluster bomb? It's worse than peace, man. <laughs> well, 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 let's talk about that in quick two seconds. Um, my, my, you know, listen. Yes, James, James Gandolfini's body was not was not even cold before his wristwatch was snatched off his wrist. And and you know, to compound things and make this even worse, it, it wasn't you, Clyde. This you missed that one. But that's a, just no. a terrible story. People take awful, awful, horrible advantage. Like what? What kind of people would, what kind of person would do that? You know, just terrible. Okay. So Clyde, tell me, uh, you ran over, you ran over to the, all right, well, let's get to that. Then. Dun, 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 Watch munch. Dun, 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 dun. Big Nanza, $2 and 99 cents. Mr. Watch munch. Thank you. Watch munch. Preciato. Remember every you know, time. I wonder if I should, I wonder if I should tell me, I wonder if mm -hmm. I should take that last rancher mug. And raffle it off or sell it. What do you think? No, you should try and break it. You know, you should join the Ukrainian mug tossing team. You know, Bear Clooney's got great taste in watches. So, all you know, all you know, saludos to him. I, I know he's very loyal to Archie, but you know, well, Clyde, does Ar hold on, Clyde, tell me one thing. Does Archie have any friends? No, he has no friends. That's right. And the so reason is Clyde, hold on, has Clyde, is, is Bear Clooney Archie's friend? <sighs> I think he's loyal. I think, yeah, yeah. I think he would be. I think he would be a friend if Archie was capable of having a friend. That's right. So sooner or later, Archie will shit on Bear Clooney. That's what's going to happen because it uh, always does. I think that was kind of. I've had people say that was happening. He, he was seriously pissing him off, like even last night. It's going to happen. It has yeah. to happen. Look, let me ask because, you a simple question. Like, 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 look, guys, if you're on, if you're on the other channel, it's you. You might as well be a bag of lettuce coming <laughs> out. Because you're going to have an expiration date. Tell me what happens. I had so many people, so many people approach me and said, "Hey, love you and everything else, but just be aware of it." Yeah, it's never going to last. Clyde, Clyde, you, you know, you know who Bear Clooney was before Bear Clooney was Bear Clooney on that show? No, Suckerhorn. Where's Suckerhorn? What happened to Suckerhorn? What has Archie done with Suckerhorn? Oh, he's my best friend. I love him. He helps me with the channel. Suckerhorn gone, and that is because Archie has no. Friends, that's all. Yeah. AC3 perfected the lip wristed throwing style used by Lamar in Re Revenge of the God, I love that. I love that. Yes. And the, and the javelin bounce flopping up and down as he's running wasn't, with it. Wasn't that the introduction of a character that was to become famous named Booger? <laughs> no, Booger. No, Lamar was the. Um, yeah. He was. Um, there's two ways to describe it. Neither one, I don't know. Yeah. Never mm. mind. Forget it. Mm. Just look up a little Vietnam more. And, right. Vietnam and Korea both had close to 50,000. Yeah, Vietnam had about 50,000 dead, and Korea had just a little, I think a little bit over. Just, you know, terrible. And when you see 50,000 names, I have, I myself have not had the opportunity yet to see the Vietnam Memorial, but I, 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 I am sure I eventually will. Not Guys, fun. if you want to watch some incredibly compelling YouTube, Really, really, and I, I think important, much more important than what you know we watch, you know, nutballs right. do. On you, you want to see some important YouTube? Start looking up interviews with um, World War II, Korea War, Vietnam War vets, Afghanistan War, Iraqi War. There are people who are documenting the stories of soldiers, officers, nurses, helicopter pilots, etc from various branches of the service through these different wars. And these interviews are uncut, uncensored. They run anywhere from a half an hour to two hours long. And I think it's so important to document what these people went through uh, in the service of their country, our country, 
um, if you happen to be American. And if you're not American, look it up for your country because what man with these a lot of these people, yeah, a lot of other countries uh, mm -hmm. send trips as well. <laughs> Craig shit. I thoroughly enjoy liking your channel, like going to AC3s and hitting the thumbs down. It's a ritual. Well, well thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Going up, sending down. Going up. You see, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like the cycle of life. Mutual destruction. Well, that's what Archie's show is. Look, uh, you know, both Clyde and I spent years helping to build that channel and and, and we did it. We enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I'm not here to try and shut Archie down, but no. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm Archie really has no loyalty to any. People have loyalty to him, but it's not, it's definitely not two way street. Peter no. Woodman. I just saw Saving Private Ryan again last night. The movie is over 20 years old. has never been replicated. That movie is as realistic as it gets. I, the opening sequence is um, really yeah. horrifying and horrifyingly magnificent. It shows you well, what it's supposed to be very, very accurate. And it shows you what those guys went through on that on Normandy Beach. Amazing, amazing movie. No, I saw the adult parody, Shaving Ryan's Privates. <laughs> you beat me to it, Clyde. Damn it. <laughs> but yeah, the, you know what? For an opening war sequence. Yep. There are two movies that just like blow me out of the water for Kelly's modern heroes. day. <laughs> no. Um, okay, How can so, you say that? Kelly's Heroes has Oddball, man. I don't even. Well, let, work with me here. Gladiator, Clyde. The opening sequence in Gladiator is a is a war scene. Oh, yeah. I figures why well, you'd like Gladiator, obviously. <laughs> do you like Gladiator movies, little Jimmy? Well, I do. And uh, the movie Gladiator. I mean, have, you ever, with... have you ever seen a cockpit before? <laughs> Sit on my lap. Um, anyway, yeah, no, the opening scene of Gladiator had the dog, the wolf dog, and, you know, incredible. But the, those two movies, uh, Saving Private Ryan and Gladiator, had the most incredible opening, you know, sequences. Another one of my favorites, Clive, what do you, how do you feel about that? Another movie that I, I'm going to want to review it soon, I think. Master and Commander. You know that that movie. Yeah, I, I like Glory. Mm. Oh, that's a great movie. Yep, it's a great Glory. Fifty fourth Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, that's a great movie. That was about the uh, African American, you know, brigade that uh, you know marched into the jaws of death. Yep, just to prove just to prove that they can you know that they can just as brave as uh, their white counterparts. Yeah. Pretty yeah, and and, Actually, and and they were historically accurate and uh, and yeah. amazing. That's a that's a wonderful movie. Those are I love me a war I love me a war picture. You know, this is not an important film. Some of the movies that we've just been discussing, I think, were important films. Not an important film, but very freaking good was Fury, um, yeah. with Brad Pitt as a tanker. You know where Brad Pitt's from? Where he's born, right? No, Iowa. No, no. where? Come on. Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. Yep. Oklahoma. Well, he never dropped the howitzer shell Clyde. No, he not didn't. In that movie. Not in that movie, anyway. On the other hand, um, what's his name? Alec Baldwin did. Pull the trigger. I need to give a master and commander another shot. Either. I was too young to appreciate. If you watch that movie now, you will really enjoy it. It's a, it's a wonderful period piece. If you want. And you know, I hate to say it. Sometimes I'll go back and I'm, I'll find some sharp, um, British. Kind of works the same th way as Master Commander, um, so. Yeah, mm. UK, UK, UK guys, you know what I'm talking about. They do. Clyde Z, we're going to call it a day at an hour, 18 minutes. Thank you so much for joining me. Hit the uh, notification bell on your way out, fellas. Clyde, are you willing to join me again on another Rebel, Absolutely. Rebel, Rebel stream? Just, you don't even have to, for your channel, you don't even have to rub them up. I just will ask. And but, I will but, ask. Make, but it makes me feel funny down there when you do. I will ask. I will ask frequently, guys. If you're still with me, thank you so much for having me. Oh, there. okay. Subscribe, like, oh, look, do all that stuff. Ooh, ooh, it's new. It's Hotsy. Mm. Hotsy, 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 Mama. Hi, Hotsy. And um, before oh, we you know, go, she, let me let know, me just suggest. You know, she knows how to fly a helicopter and an airplane. Do you do you like gladiator movies, little Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. Well, what I want people to do is to tell me in the comments who they would like to see guest starring on this show, along with me and Clyde. Fellas, thank, thank you. you for having been with me. Mark Goldberg, Clyde Anderson, Mark Vlogs Watches. Let's do it again soon.